Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Danielle Knight and we have a very special Facebook Live. I'm here with Lisa Spangler and we're gonna talk about News ELA, or I call it Newsella. but Lisa says News ELA. So for all the purposes tonight, whether you hear one or the other, it's the same thing. Uh, News ELA is a great tool, it's an online tool that you will fall in love with tonight and I Bet you anything tomorrow when you go to school, you're going to open it up and see all the goodies we're going to talk about tonight. And it's going to be a part of your lessons for nonfiction reading, right, Lisa? Like right. articles. Yeah. And, okay. So nonfiction for myself in my classroom has always been a challenge to work in. It is. Uh, you know, we're loaded up with the fiction, the novel studies, but the last handful of years, because of the Common Core, we have to get nonfiction into our classroom lessons. Sure. So, you know, I've always done things like with biographies, current events, uh, pre-reading activities with background information. But I always, I still find it a challenge finding online resources that I can consistently go to. So sure. that's why that's why you're here tonight. Okay. <laughs> okay. So everyone, this is Lisa Spangler. Lisa and I have known each other for a couple of years. I love her. Uh, we have some cool things in common. We're both boy moms. True. Yep. And I uh, just really hit it off with you in person, which yes. is a really special thing when you meet someone online and then you meet them in person and you say to yourself, if I worked with her in the same school building, we'd be having lunch together. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay. So why don't you tell us about yourself and okay. we'll get started. Yeah, sure. So, well, you know my name and I've been teaching, this is my 23rd year teaching middle school mostly language arts, um, sometimes some other things randomly because that's how life is. Um, and I'm in Florida. And so it's beautiful weather right now. Absolutely gorgeous weather. It was actually hot today. Um, but very big school. My middle school um, is the biggest in the, um, actually, I think in the state right now. We've got lots and lots of kids. So uh, busy place, busy place. So in Florida, there are countywide school systems, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. And so, I'm in Orange County. Which county? Orange County. Orange County. Okay. So Orange County is north central Florida? Yeah, more central. Orlando is sort okay. of it. Yeah. yeah. So do you go to Disney? Oh, yes. We have annual passes. <laughs> That's great. And Disney Vacation Club. We are big Disney nerds. <laughs> well, I better make sure my kids don't hear about this. Okay. Uh, yeah, they're begging for a Disney, va um, Disney cruise. Oh. The we'll best. get there. Yeah, we'll get there. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you can swing, if you can swing a, a a middle of the winter, you would think, oh, this would be a terrible time to go. January, February, good deals. Good deals. Okay. Hmm? Nice. Yeah, I haven't done the Disney yet. People probably okay. like, what? You haven't? I just, yeah, we just haven't. Okay. I try to keep them unaware of it for as long as I could. <laughs> but the Disney <laughs> Channel always has commercials, and kids in school are always talking about it. So. Mm-hmm. That's neat. So yeah, you neat. blog about language arts. I do. Yeah. And you're in a blended learning classroom, like with um, tech infused. Like, what are, are you on devices? Not yet. We ha we're going to be one to one next year. So we have laptop carts um, that they let us check out, and I do use those. Um, so yeah, I mean. That's, that's the best we have right now. <laughs> so what's that like um, sharing the cart with other teachers? Do you find, like, is it really difficult to get the cart in your room? Or you know you don't really have problems? It's not terrible. Sometimes it is because there's a limited number. There's probably something like mm, maybe 30 carts to check out for. Oh, that's a lot. It, oh, well, yeah, it's a but okay. it's a really big school. We have almost 200 teachers. Oh, that's a big yeah. staff. Yeah. So most of the time I can get one when I want one, but sometimes I can't. So sometimes I just kind of have to move things around. Okay. But next year should be piece of cake. Well, more or less. <laughs> because? Everyone will have their own laptop. Okay, that's right. Okay. That's yep. Right. Yep. So, you know, I'm going to say you're ahead of the game then with your background and things I've seen you talk about in the last couple of years for being a tech-infused teacher. Well, I try anyway. Yeah. I, I, I try to follow sort of the trends and try to keep up with what's going on so that I can at least try it out this year. So that way I know next year what will work, what won't work, or 
how it might work if everybody had a computer versus how it works now. So, okay, cool. I love that you're optimistic about it. Like you're like, okay, well, it's going to happen. I think it's important as teachers that we adapt. True. And don't always complain first, but instead picture maybe it could be good. Yeah. Oh yeah, it could be yeah. good. I mean, I I know there are a lot of things to do with the management of each student having their own laptop that I. Yeah. I'm trying to anticipate, but I don't know if I'm going to, I'm probably going to have to just fly by the seat of my pants <laughs> for some of it anyway, until I well, figure it out. Well, that's why being involved with Facebook groups is really good because you could read what everybody else is doing. And yes. yeah, I, do, I find groups awesome for that. Me too. I save posts like crazy. Right. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so tonight we're talking about News ELA. So tell us um, what is this awesome website? What is it? Okay. Well, basically, it's um, a storehouse of all kinds of nonfiction articles from things like arts and culture, science and math, religion, government, geography, world history, U.S. history, primary sources. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Wow. But what's the best part about it, I think, is that as a teacher, I can go in and I can search by subject. But I can also search by standard. Now, they're all linked up to the Common Core standards. But I know if I need more practice with, let's say, Central Idea, I can click Central Idea. And it will show me in seventh grade, because I'm teaching seventh grade this year. And it'll show me all the articles that are Central Idea and seventh grade. Hold on. Is this new? Is this a new feature they have? No, no. Well, I think it might be a pro feature. I'm not sure, because my school bought pro. So OK. Because, oh, my God, that would be just the reason to use it, if you ask me. Oh, oh, yeah, that's wonderful. And then the pro version also allows, like, if I, I can assign it to my classes, and then when they all um, read and take the quizzes, then I can see individual scores, and I can see how long they spent on it. So some of those kids will be like, well, I tried my best. Sure, in a minute and 30 seconds, you tried your best. <laughs> yeah, right? Right? Oh, right. Yeah. No, I've seen time. that. Uh -huh. And then they'll say a minute and 30 seconds, they're like, how do you know that? It's a computer. What are you thinking? Oh, that's great. But How do you know that? Yeah. <laughs> I tried really hard with this bag You're like, Dad, I did. I did. No way. Okay. Oh, no. I've been there. Uh, if you're listening tonight, raise your hand if you've been there or click like. Give me, give me a comment. Yeah. We're going to see the comments get filled up. Um, so how sure. often do you use New, New ZLA in your classroom? Well, we try to use it about once a week, but I got to be honest with you, when we're in the throes of essay writing because of our state test, we don't. We use what the state gives us. We use other articles to focus on the writing. Um, but when, we're, when we can, you know, in the beginning of the year and then after the writing test, we try to do it about once a week. That's supposed to be our goal. New ZLA, of course, says twice a week, but... You know, I mean, okay. we can only do what we can do this year. I can see next year it being so much easier to do. Don't picture like bell ringers. <clears throat> are the articles that short? Are, they, are there articles short enough to do that? There might be some. Um, they do have them at five different lexiles, so it might be that if you found one article that you really liked, you could bring the lexile down to where it's going to shorten it and it's going to make okay. it more bell ringer type. Otherwise, by the time they, for me, in a 45-minute period, 45, 50-minute period, by the time they get in, get settled, computers open, logged in, la, la, la. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it takes almost a whole period to read and do a quiz. Almost. I mean, you're going to have some advanced kids that are just going to, you know, snap, snap. But Always. Always. Yeah. Okay. So you just have something planned for after. <laughs> Always for the early finishers, right? You always mm -hmm. do, right? So mm -hmm. is, is News LA... Is it available through browser? Is it an app? Can you get it on different devices? It's both, actually. You can use it on a computer, and, and then they have the um, app. It functions just like the desktop site, which is super cool. Because super then, right. yeah, especially for the kids, because then it's not any different, and they can't have any really good excuse for why they no. can't use it. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I often say this. if. If you are from News ELA and you're tuning into this, thank you for making your awesome site available on different devices and allowing teachers to access it across different platforms. And that's great because sometimes, Lisa, we'll talk about a cool technology that's only available on a tablet. So then yeah. I get people that make really great comments 
about like, well, I'm on a Chromebook. So this isn't good for me. So that stinks. So that's great. So you can do it different devices. Yeah. Like you said, nobody has any excuses. <laughs> <laughs> so is New LA for elementary level students or does it go up to uh, 12th grade? It, um, yep. I'm high school. So would I enjoy it? For sure. It's second grade through 12th grade. And you can, and even within that, it'll give you, so let's say you chose, I don't know, a second grade article on, I don't know, Dr. Martin Luther King, let's just say it'll still give you five different Lexiles. So you could keep it right where it sets it at second grade. You could bump it down a little bit or you could bump it up a little bit, depending on what you're working with. Like I have a whole class of advanced kids and while maybe at the beginning of the year, I might keep it right at seventh grade. If they are whipping through those things, I'm gonna say, you know, let's, let's move it up a little bit. Now the only downside of that is the kids can change it too. And I've talked to News LA about this and I've said, hey, you know, I think maybe it should be a pro feature where if I set the Lexile here, that it stays here and that the kids can't change it. But right now as it stands, the kids can change it. So sometimes I'll get kids, I'll say, leave it here. They don't, they lower it because they want an easier read. Of course. Or an easier so why do you think, why do you think that's a feature that they don't control? Like why, why? Well, when they're friends, it just seems like they feel like that, that um, kids need to feel comfortable and that they okay. need to choose for themselves. And I kind of see that in some regard. Uh, but especially if they were doing more of sort of a homeschool type of a thing. But in a traditional classroom, since I'm the one that's responsible for knowing their reading level and trying to bring their reading right. level up, you know, I need to be able to have some measure of control of that. That's my personal opinion. But yeah. All right, I'm just trying to picture different situations where, I mean, it, it would happen to me all the time if I said it at something and they figured right. it out, they would totally, re yeah, they would redo yep. it. Yep, and they and do. Are you involved with like um, New LA groups or like message boards? Uh, I'm just wondering if that's a common complaint or a common concern, we'll call it. Yeah, I don't know. You know, that's a good question. I haven't joined any New LA groups. I should look for them. I haven't done that. One of those okay. things. Just wondering. Yeah, I'm just yeah, wondering yeah, if no. that's like a good question. Are you an ambassador for them? Do they have that program? Um, they may. I'm not. I'm just a I'm just a pro subscriber that when what's nice about that is that when I um chat with them, they will they will chat right back. So I don't oh, know if it's just yeah. So I've done a lot of that and then they've asked for my opinion at various times and I always put that one in. <laughs> Okay, that's awesome. So that's great. You have they have a good communication. So if anybody wants to try it after this Facebook Live, if you have any questions, they'll get back to you. That's cool. So um, does News LA provide assessments for teachers to use? You mentioned earlier yeah. uh, quizzes. Now, are you making those quizzes? Or are you getting them from them? No, it's through News LA. So after each or with each um, passage is a quiz. It's usually well, at least at my grade level, about five questions. Now they've added a few things. They've added something for vocabulary. I think they call it power words. Um, and an article with power words has different words that are like underlined or bolded or maybe both actually. And you can sort of mouse over them and it will show you the meaning of the word because they're trying to build vocabulary. And then there are some written response ones, but the written response ones, then you have to grade versus otherwise the multiple choice ones are automatically right. graded. Okay. So I would almost rather right now anyway, because of the manual grading for the written response to have the kids write it on a piece of paper, which is kind of crazy if I'm going to have them do it because. No, oh, I, I think that's them. great. Yeah, it just, it makes it a little bit easier for me. I've got half or more of half the grade, you know, um, automatically graded than the other part that I would have to do. Now, next year, they'll have to do it on the device, right? Yeah, they will. They will. Okay. I'll have to give that up. <laughs> You're not going to have any paper? No, I think we will. I think we will. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a learning curve. I think they're going to be. I think, I think more times we just don't hear that much about it, but I think when, when schools are like, we're gonna be one-to-one, -one, that lasts for a little while, and by Christmas, everyone's got paper in their classroom. <laughs> <laughs> right? By January, we're doing the, we're doing the a, little, a little give and take, a little give and take, you know, this is new. Um, okay, is News LA free? Now, you said you have a, um, a pro account. If I wanted to, after watching this video with us, mm -hmm. go try it, can I? 
Oh yeah, you totally free. can. There is a free version and you can totally sign up for an account. You just, I think they want, they're looking for um, a, a, like an official school email, but parents could sign up too. So it doesn't have to be an official school email, but if you sign up with like a Gmail or something like that, they're not going to give you as many features to play with because they're going to think you're a parent and you could be, I mean, but sometimes parents do things to try to help their kids. I'm just picturing like in the summer, I would maybe do this with my son. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you totally could. You totally could. So what is the difference between New ZLA and New ZLA Pro? Well, the free version kind of limits what you can do. Um, you can still um, have kids take quizzes and things, but you only get to see the class average. Whereas with a pro subscription, you get a chance to um, see each student's individual performance. Yeah, I would rather do that anyway. Yeah, I would too. So I would that's, say that. I would yeah. say that's like a game changer in the New ZLA world. But you yeah. said you paid for the subscription for you? Yes, my school pays for it. They bought it for all of the language arts teachers. I'm not sure about the reading or not, but for sure the language arts teachers. You know, I think, uh, I think teachers more should ask for things to be paid for. And I think they'd be surprised that somebody would say yes to them. I think you're right. I think too many times as educators, we, you know, we say like, either I have to pay for this myself or they're just going to say no. But I always found like if you print it out, you bring it into the office, you show them what you the answer could be yes. It's true. It's true. It's, it's surprising sometimes where they right. seem to come up with money. <laughs> So, uh, do you have anything to show us? Like, do you yeah, want to yeah. check it out with you? Yeah, let's do that. We can okay. take a look at that. Okay, so Lisa's going to share her screen. And while she gets that going, uh, I'm going to mention a couple things about New ZLA on how I like to use it. Um, for my experiences, have been with biographies, and I like to tie it in with growth mindset not so, sharing is it and like the new ZLA to me is a very reliable site for people to use because it is for educational purposes you know there's other websites like biography.com and you know Britannica you know they're great websites also but this has this was created for classroom use correct yes yes okay so I'm ready okay well I clicked it oh I see share screen my fault. No, though no, we're good. Hey, listen. Did it go? No. Okay, we gotta, we gotta roll with it. Okay, so I see your news ELA browsers open. Oh, good. You do see it. Yeah. Okay, great. So, um, if I, it already has me signed in, um, okay. because I've signed in from home before. So, um, with this in my binder, um, here's all my classes down here below. And right now, I think I have it all set to where they are going to be um, working with a new ZLA article this coming Thursday. And oh, so you're going to show us what you're doing this Thursday? Yes. <laughs> okay. Cool. No, I love that. I hope you're okay. not watching that. <laughs> they probably are. Okay. Now it says I have to assign it, but I thought I had. So that's okay because I know what. I said, but for each, so in each class, let's see. Oh, that's an old class. Isn't that interesting? Okay. Oh, I know why. I know why. Okay. Class. Okay. Here it is. Okay. So I assigned this article, um, this ancient religions, public worship, worship of the Greeks and Romans. And you can see the skills right underneath it. No one started it yet because I haven't, um, I haven't, Thursday hasn't come, but you can see that the three skills that it's going to quiz the students are, are the first one, what the text says, then central idea and text structure, because we're reviewing right now. Uh, we have our state test in reading uh, two weeks from tomorrow, <laughs> so we're trying to get as much bang for the buck as we can, so we've got three standards going on this one, and then we'll do another one on Friday for some other ones. So if I were going to find this, let's see, I would go to the library. And you can see all the choices there. Um, I could stop and go back to that, but when uh, it'll give all the latest ones. But if I keep my mouse over that word library on the right hand side, you can see all the different categories of different articles that they have. 
and then you know their latest articles are the ones that have the pictures right there but once I click on library and then it says I can narrow my choices and you can see it's grade 2 and then 9 through 10 they put together and 11 through 12 they put together but for me I would pick seventh grade because that's what I teach and then I would put in the different standards that I'm looking for and it, it, they do come in Spanish but that's the only other language they have right now and not all of them you can see that there's that many in English, but only 252 in Spanish. But right. they're starting right. just for trying. That's something, though. Yeah. So, so uh, for the viewers, okay, so I just want to make this quick comment, this quick point. So the 910 yeah. and the 1112, the reason they're banded like that is because of the Common Core. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, so the Common Core for grades 9 and 10 are together, and the 1112s are together. So this website is totally aligned. Yes. Okay. And so if I click grade seven and I click these three different standards, it shows me all these different articles I could choose. And I guess it really depends on what I'm doing and what I might want to do, you know, with the students or what they might be studying. I mean, you know, you can really find just about anything. Like we were doing mythology, so that's why I picked out this article because it was connected to what we had been reading. I was just going to ask you if you assign your readings based on what you're doing in class. Okay, I that's do. cool. Yep, I sure do. That's great. I think that's important for everyone. For sure. Right. Like I wouldn't do I wouldn't do a Greek mythology reading if I was teaching of mice and men. I would look for a Great Depression article. You know, right. Or, um, something maybe on California uh, migrant workers. Yes. To tie it in with the novel. So that's cool. So you were doing Greek mythology. Was that because it was tied in with a novel study or? Um, no, we were using um, Greek myths to um, go through some different standards again, re revisiting what we had learned nice. earlier in the that's year. That's one of my favorite things to teach. So I was just wondering. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And we, we really enjoyed it. And the kids have kind of enjoyed it too. So it made it fun. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, so, so they also have like different news articles. Like if you were like wanting to do current events, you know, maybe you, you teach social studies and you want to do current events. There are a lot of neat little things that you can do news events. And then they also offer this thing called text set, which is like, like if I pick text sets for text sets for literature. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's another topic. <laughs> okay, the text to sets. Hey, wait, New Zealand, New Zealand, no, that's hard to say, by the way. <laughs> oh, great. I know, right? Okay. okay. Thank God we teach secondary, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, Percy Jackson, the Lightning Thief. That's funny. Yeah. So there's a good one. That's related to mythology. And when I click on that, it will give me a whole bunch that are supposed to be related. But when I'm looking through this right now, not seeing it. <laughs> okay. I did not come through that way. I don't know. That's so weird. I'm gonna try to go back and try that again. Oh, I see. So the lightning thief would be like the main topic. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's see what they got again. Yeah, let me try that one more time. I'm just sorry that usually. Actually, I'm actually I'm working on something for the lightning thief. So this. Here we go. That's better. Okay. So Here now it gives me all these things that are in the same set that are supposed to go together, and those first five, six do. And then that's weird. Now there's some other ones that don't really go. Well, lightning and thunder, I could see that. Money. Now, are the text sets developed through like their algorithm? Like because yeah. prior people that have used News ELA that were teaching Percy Jackson, the, light, the lightning thief, and then maybe use those articles. So now they're all part of like a text set. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. I'm just wondering because some of these are a little unusual choices, but that's okay. I mean, it's just. Maybe because Percy Jackson had ADHD, so that's why they use the ADHD. That's it. He was diagnosed with ADHD. Right. But yeah, but you and I know that that wasn't the issue, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but but he thought he did. You're the son of Poseidon. Things like that happened, right? Right. <laughs> I'd say, yeah, I remember, um, I remember that. They were blaming it on that, right? Right. That's Is there anything great, else that's you want to see while we're here? Is there anything I... text. Okay, so how, can you go back to the teacher's portal, the dashboard page, show okay. us again, um, how, you don't have to show us how you set up your classes, but I want to show, I want to oh. show everyone, you do have all your classes in there. I do. 
let's see. I think classes are set up right here under my name, and I just, oops, I clicked it. <laughs> now, I meant to hold it. Does this sync with Google Classroom? It does. So I think if I show my classes, perfect. Yep. It shows you right here, and then you can see right here it says import Google Classroom, and it even has now Microsoft Classroom. Nice. Oh, that's wonderful. So you didn't have to manually type all those kids' names. No, no. Yes. And there was two ways to do it. One way to do it was, you know, I could manually add students. Like if I just have a random student that pops right. into class on Thursday for their first day, I can put them right in. Not a problem. Right. Okay. But what I do, what you can do is you have the kids use the class code. So when the first time they log in, they log in with that class code and um, it puts them right into the class. Now, if I had them in Google Classroom, then I would be able to just, boom, there you go. Um, but we're moving, uh, we're moving away from Google Classroom and into something called Canvas. Sure, you're and gonna love it. It's gonna, I, apparently in my district bought the quote Cadillac version of Canvas and, and that we're all going to be thrilled. And we've started using it this year and I've been able to play with it and figure out a lot of things, but there are still a lot of things to learn. And I guess they're going to pay me to go to a summer training on Canvas this summer, so I shall go. <laughs> okay, so I think that's going to be my topic next time with you. <laughs> oh, that'd be great, yeah. I'll have you on for Canvas. Um, I only hear awesome things. I've never used it myself in a classroom, but anybody that uses Canvas, you'll see in the groups on Facebook, they always say like, oh, I love Canvas. Oh, but I wish, I'm wondering if Canvas will be able to sync with this. I don't know. I hope so. I mean, right now we have um, uh, in our district, we have this thing called launch and it's when the kids log in, they get this screen and it almost looks like the face of a cell phone. There's all these apps that they have available to them. And one of them is New LA. So I don't know if it's just integrated that way or if they're working on that. Maybe I wouldn't you be surprised. Just have to give them the class code and just have them add themselves. Yeah. Yeah, it's an easy workaround. There's no no need to totally uh, worry. No, about and you know what? You know what's cool now? Like probably in your district, the children that you you have in seventh grade this year have been on a device since kindergarten. If you think about it, so this is not the first rodeo, right? Like this is yeah, it's know, crazy. They, they know terms like class code, login, right? Okay. Yeah. No, that's really that's an important point, and that's. Pretty cool. Kind of crazy to think about. <laughs> um, yeah. But cool. Yeah. Uh, so, let's see. You mentioned before that parents can join. That was actually one of my questions. Uh, yep. Can parents join? <laughs> Do you recommend? I, I'm thinking that's not a bad idea. I would recommend parents to join. I don't think it's a bad idea as long as, like, if, for example, if I um, have a student who's absent on Thursday and so they have to do um, that. Um, uh, Roman religion article at home, I would just hope that their parents wouldn't sort of do it for them. No. You see, that's the only thing that's a little like, you know, but hopefully people will be, you know, doing the right thing and I just have to trust that. So that's what I do. You know, I think that's been an, that's been an ancient issue since we've started everything, right? Whether it was yeah. with technology or not. Right. You know, there's times when my son is, he's got a poster to do and he'll, he'll say to me, well, I'm going to help you. I go, help me. I'm going to help you. I'm like, right. I'm helping you. I'll hand you things. I'll show you how to do the straight line and stuff. But yeah, this is you, buddy. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm not going to read articles for anyone and answer questions for them. No, and I know you don't do that in your house. No. Okay. No. Okay. Now. Can we go back and click on what's available in Spanish? Sure. Sure. Okay. okay. Because I want people, I want teachers to see, you know, I, I'm thinking like, because I'm not, I don't, I don't, I'm not an ESL teacher, but in my classroom of 25 kids, typically I would have maybe two or three children that are either in the ESL program or they just got out. Right. Actually, this year I have two classes that are nothing but ESOL or ELL students. Okay. Yeah. It just had, but then I just had a light bulb go off. That says, 
when you're in an ELA classroom, the goal is not to give the Spanish article. You want yeah. them to read it in English. So sure. the our Spanish articles would be best for a Spanish class. What do you Probably. think? Yeah, or, or, or like Spanish classes, like you're taking Spanish as a foreign language. Exactly, exactly. That's, that's, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what you meant. Sorry. So, well, so right. yeah, in New Jersey, we call them world language classes. Okay, so. World language. language. Okay, yes. I'm world sorry. Class. Or in New Jersey, we also have bilingual education. Mm. There uh, are some, some schools um, where I live. I don't live in Orange County. I live in Lake County. And in Lake County, there's a school that that's like their whole thing is that they're a bilingual school. So all the kids starting in kindergarten learn Spanish and English all the way up. So this amazing. would be perfect for that. That's amazing. Okay, so let's take a look. Yeah. What do we have? So it says we got 429 articles. So if I just, I didn't, I didn't designate, you know, any grade level. Okay. I just went ahead and clicked on the Spanish. And, oh, Wrinkle in Time, that's cool. That's great. And Valentine's Day. I don't know everything. Obviously, that's Supreme Court. Happy New Year. There's a lot of great things. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so those are, that option is there, and I think that's a great thing for everyone to consider. That's awesome. Oh, what's that? <laughs> I'm not sure. It's like a frog, a frog thing. Uh, that's oh, Frankenstein. Science. I thought it was science. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, any, any, Lisa, are we missing anything? Um, I just think I'm blown away at the Common Core. You can click off. Oh, I love that. That is my favorite feature is the whole being able to um, choose my grade and choose the standards I want. That is my favorite thing. Absolutely favorite thing. So what, well, is, what is like your favorite? The close second is getting every student's, um, you know, uh, score and the time they spend on the article. That's my second favorite probably because the first favorite is because this takes so much time all by itself. <laughs> Just finding the right standard with the right article. You know, if you, I was doing it manually. It's so, oh wow, that's so important. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, you showed us a lot of great things tonight. Um, sure. I appreciate everything. I, I think this is an awesome website. I guess, you know, I've been following, uh, I've been following them on Instagram for like two years. Oh. Yeah, I do. And uh, yeah, it looks like a very uh, young group, young company. And I believe they're growing, so they're going to be around. Oh, I think I, so. Yeah, and I think it's only going to get better. I remember when they first came out, everyone was like, did you see that there's a site with like leveled reading? And I, so they're like one of the first, I, I would say. Yeah, I think so, too. I haven't seen anything that's, I mean, there are other websites out there, but not for nonfiction. Not as, not as good as this one, no. No. I'm going to say no. Okay. I agree. All right. So, um. Lisa, when we're finished, she's going to stick around in the comments. She's going to answer questions, going to drop some blog stuff for you. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed tonight. Lisa, I can't thank you enough. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. You're fabulous. And if, if you should be delivering PD in your district, because oh. I, I thoroughly enjoyed everything you had to say. And thank you so much. And you're going to come back. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about um, some cool things that you've developed yourself for your classroom. Or maybe we'll do that next time. Sure. And I would love to do Canvas with you. Yeah, I'd love to do that too. I hope I, I hope I know enough to share. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you, I bet you will. I bet you will. I bet you'll be fine. All right. Well, okay. thank you everyone, and um, stick around. Put some comments, and we'll talk more. Um, talk more after the live. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye, Lisa. Bye. Bye. Thank you.